Hey, welcome to Educator.com. We're going to be talking about how to create frequency distributions um, in Excel from raw data. All right, so we're just going to overview um, one sample data set in Excel already. You could download it um, from, a, from one of the links below. Um, then we're going to talk about how to create frequency distributions from that data. Um, but in order to create these distributions, visualizable, seeable distributions, we need to go first from the data to frequency tables. Then from the tables, we'll go then to the visualizations. All right, so first going from raw data to frequency tables. Well, the reason we want to do this is oftentimes when we look at raw data, it's really hard to make sense of. It's just rows and rows and rows of data. Um, and it'd be really nice um, if somebody could summarize that data for us so that we could visualize it. When we summarize and visualize that data, we get a sense of what the data looks like. And we're going to be talking later about actual shapes of distributions. So there's two ways to go and do frequency tables in Excel. One is by using formulas. Here we're going to be using the formula count if. The other way is to use pivot tables. And so I'm going to show you one example of using pivot tables, but we're going to be using mostly the formulas. So if you want to open up your Excel file that has all of our data in it, this is um, a, data, a sample data set of, let's say, 100 friends from Facebook. Uh, notice that they all have this CID, which is their case ID, and each column shows some sort of characteristic or variable. Um, and each cell for each person has a value for that variable. So let's look at example one, CID number one, case number one. For this person, they have four tagged photos, not a lot of tagged photos. They seem to have zero mobile uploads. Um, again, not a lot of mobile uploads. Maybe they don't have a smartphone, right? Um, so if we go down the line, we could see that there are lots and lots and lots of variables here. So there's tagged photos, mobile up, uh, photos, uploaded photos, uh, profile pictures, their number of friends, number of siblings, uh, relationship status, right? So there's a whole bunch of these. But here's one that we're going to be focusing on today, birth month. Birth month is going to be important for us today. Also, we're going to be looking at age and height. Now, if I asked you, oh, see these 100 people? I'll show them to you sort of all at once so you could see them. Oh, okay, not all at once, but here's these 100 people. What can you tell me about their age? What can you tell me about their height? It'd be really hard to do because it's just lines and lines and lines of data. It'd be nice if there was one way where we could just sort of easily see all the data at once in a way where it was a little more tangible to us. And that's why we're going to be talking about how to visualize these and how to create frequency tables. So in the files that I've provided for you, we're, I've put in little tabs already. One of the sheets has all of our data in it. One of the sheets talks about the variables. So here we have a whole bunch of different variable names, like the case ID number, um, the tagged photos, how many photos they're tagged in, mobile uploads, how many mobile photos uploaded, um, relationship status, right? relationship status, uh, birth month, birth year, gender. So these are a whole bunch of different variables that are already in this data set. I also have a column that tells you what kind of measure it is. So is it a nominal measure where it's just a name? It's a number, but it really stands for a name. A relationship status is one of those where there's a number there, like one, two, three, or four, but it doesn't mean that the relationship status is literally like the number one. It actually means if you scroll over, if they have a zero, it means that their relationship status is blank. If they have a one, it means that they're single. If they have a two, it means they're in a relationship. If it's a three, they're engaged. If it's a four, they're married. And if it's a five, it's complicated. Six, if it's other, right? So that's an example 
of what we call a nominal type of measure. And just so you could keep, see all of these things at the same time, if you, if you look down here, there's this little, it looks like two little blue uh, rectangles. If you drag that over, then you could sort of keep this column uh, just static and locked while you move these columns. All right? All right. So we could also see that birth month is what we call, um, it's sort of interval. It could also be seen as ordinal. It's not quite interval because it's technically like 30 or 31 days. <laughs> so it's not exactly the same interval, but you could sometimes call it interval. Um, and each of the numbers represent one of the months. Birth year is also interval. There's an interval of exactly one year. Uh, gender is obviously nominal because even though there's a one or a two, it doesn't mean that their gender is one or two. It means that if they have a one, they're a male. If they have a two, they're a female. Um, something like friends is really easy to understand, though, because friends is a ratio measure. It's a count of how many friends they have. So that's continuous, a continuous type of variable. And uh, if they have a zero, it means they have no friends, right? That's very rare on Facebook, but hey, it could happen. All right, so I'm going to move this locked piece over. All right, the next tab you could see there says birth month on it. And so far, I've created a little setup so that we could begin our frequency table. A frequency table is just a count of how many people are born in January, how many people are born in February, and so on and so forth, right? Now, if we had to do that by hand, it'd be really hard. We'd have to go to our data, if you click on data, go to birth month, and we'd have to count up how many people have ones. One, two, right? But this is a very error-prone process, so we're gonna use Excel to help us do that really efficiently. 